In the last video, we looked at sampling means. What are they, where do they come from, and how do we use them? Now we're going to look at calculating the probability of a sampling mean. And one interesting fact about sampling means is whether or not your original data is normally distributed, your sampling means will always be normally distributed. So we can use the normal distribution to help us calculate the sampling means. If you go back to the last chapter, you recall, we were calculating the probability of any given value of x for a normal distribution by converting it to a z value and then finding the probability associated with that value, usually by looking it up on a chart or by keying it into Excel. And in this formula that we used in last chapter, x represented the value we were looking for, mu represented the mean for the population, and sigma represented the standard deviation for the population. Well, we can use the exact same process for looking up the value of any given sampling mean, but we can't use the exact same formula because we're working with sampling means. So what we do is we actually change the formula a little bit. The first thing we do is change x to x bar because that's the symbol for sampling mean. That allows us to be sure which data we're working with. But we also have to change the formula a little bit. We're adding this square root of n. Now if you recall, small n represents the sample size. So we're taking the square root of the sample size, and what that actually is, is a representation of our sampling error. If you recall the last video, when we take a bunch of different samples from a population, each sample has a slightly different mean, and each of those means is slightly off from the population mean. So this allows us to correct for sampling error. Once we correct for that sampling error, the process is actually the same as the last chapter. So if we want to find the probability for less than a given sample mean, we convert that sample mean, or x bar, to a z value using our new formula. Then we look the z value up on a chart. If we want to find the probability greater than a given sampling mean, we convert that x, that x bar value to a z value, look it up on the chart, then subtract the answer from 1. And if we wanted the probability between two sampling means, we would convert each of those sampling means to a z value, look up those values on the chart, then subtract the lower value from the higher value. And if this sounds just like what we did in the last chapter, it's because it is just what we did in the last chapter. The only difference was in the last chapter we used this formula, and in this chapter we're using this formula to allow for sampling error. And that's really all there is to it. In the next video we'll look at how to modify our Excel formulas so we can use those to look up our sampling means as well.